40 to 60 minute mark than some of the agility heroes. Some of the supposed true carries yeah. just can't actually match up to what the Lena can do. Now we have a Necrophos, so Laguna Blade into a Reaper Scythe. That's a nice one-two combo that can Ten cut down almost remaining. any carry. And it is a very self-sufficient safe laner. Five seconds remaining. If we're up against the puck, I'm sure Necrophos won't mind it too much. How does DP do against uh, Lean on mid? I didn't see that matchup for... I don't know. I don't think you do very well because the Lena sits so far back and yeah. has the Dragon Slave. Great range, also good movement speed, so it's hard to get close to her. Wind Ranger at your service. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. the delayed stream that is Twitch. Better situation. But yeah, hey, we're back. Hello. Hello. Uh, we had a little bit of technical issues, so apologies for that. But we're here now with Complexity versus Planet Odd. Uh, Lacoste, you want to give us a brief uh, summary of our breakdown of the draft? Uh, first pick Drow Ranger, not what we usually see. I don't know what what uh, you saw from the stream. Um, then it got followed up. But uh, much dominated the lane. Uh, went for drums and uh, road of Atos on uh, Wind Ranger. Hero becomes so tanky with it, it's pretty much impossible to kill. He also had a root lockdown for Ember Spirit. Uh, there's no root needed this game, but uh, we'll see how it works. 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm, uh, the Wind Ranger off lane. They did this yesterday too, right? Yeah. Didn't work. They're facing up against a gyrocopter, and that lane went very well because of it, but uh, unfortunately, it still didn't prove to net be enough as a whole. To be able to, to win the game, the the puck versus Lena matchup. How do you think that goes for the puck with the Drill Ranger? Or is puck that should enough to yeah, puck over? should do fine. He can uh, phase shift out of uh, Dragon Slave. Uh, should be good. Bounty Hunter doesn't threaten puck that much. Uh, also, you have Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman is good against uh, puck, uh, but in the later stages, he he's not really mobile in the game. Didn't Planet Odd win that game with Wind Ranger? Did they? I thought that was game number three. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Oh, uh, no, you're they, right. Yeah, they won that game. Oh, yeah, very similar lineup. Okay. I am still not sure. I don't think our, our stream's actually going to be able to catch any of this. I steal from the slow. Either way, those of you in Dota TV do deserve so. 
Uh, let's see. Suena Melon's going to be matched up against a Joe Ranger lineup. This should be okay. Earthshaker is kind of one of those offlaners who can always get something done. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Moon, Me I mean, Moon Meander does have the help of Misery here against this Trine lane. They do have the Sentry down. They are going to be able to get a stun onto d Freak. Gets a lot of damage onto him. Actually brings him down to about 110 health. Demon actually picking up the Aether Shock for this lane. So opposed to the Shackles. Probably better against the dual lane. Yeah, 140 damage, level 1. Also one of the strongest spells, level 1, besides uh, Bane. Third Shaker with two mangoes will always, will always have mana on top, and they don't have much kill potential with uh, Warlock and Draw Ranger there. They need to either move Sanking uh, or wait for more levels in uh, Frost Arrows. What do you feel about Necro? Necro as a hero, pretty much we see him uh, being picked uh, to counter, let's say, a Bristleback, uh, but uh, other than that, he's not picked that often. Uh, I, I feel like he's pretty good just because the, the laning phase situation usually offers you so much, but that's like that's completely countered by the fact that they have this Windranger uh, Zen King. We've already seen the Bounty Hunter has been kind of forced down to the bottom lane. Shadow Shaman's not going to get his his free, you know, solo offlaner that he likes to be able to just harass out. So uh, yes. I feel like a large part of this uh, Wind Ranger, Drow Ranger uh, combination is actually killing a lot of what the, ne the Necrophos' initial strength is supposed to be. I think a lot of uh, teams still don't underestimate the heal amount once he uses a Ghost Shroud. Um, it's really hard to calculate how much uh, damage he can tank actually and heal up. Yeah, he death pulses and he pops his, you know, magic wand charges. Maybe he has a fairy fire. Use a little bit of healing self, and all of a sudden he he goes from 10% to 90%. To 140% yeah. HP. 140%. The mathematician Lacoste. A Russian necro would be able to do it. <laughs> Remember those uh, elections? When uh, Putin got uh, 140%. Yeah, over, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Misery trying to position himself. Does have the boots first. Uh, Mu is actually a little bit low. He did go for the magic wand uh, build up here, which I thought was kind of interesting. He even has the extra branches. Uh, maybe it's just for extra stats and. Uh, he has those extra two branches and it gives uh, actually a lot uh, during the the laning stage uh, extra two damage uh, mana pool for him also two strength Stranger picks up uh, face boots she can pretty ah our stream is back now Back to a closer time to ours. Welcome back, everybody. All right, then we're back. Uh, Warlock saving up points. Yesterday we saw uh, him scaling level two upheaval, which is pretty interesting. Then he goes for max fatal bonds after that uh, with ulti, of course. Um, upheaval, such an underrated spell. Um, you can just win a team fight with a good placed upheaval, but you need to place your hero. Somewhere they can't stun you. Yeah, I've seen a, a couple times this. Uh, I've seen a couple different Warlock builds, but I really do feel like Upheaval is the most impactful outside of the laning phase. It's just crazy how, unless you're dealing with just like all blinking heroes or something, that this Upheaval just destroys the, the team fight if you're able to get it off for more than three seconds. Imagine casting it on Rasta or Crystal Maiden. <laughs> Swift is the Wolves of Vitra. Our mid lane matchup, how's that go? 25 and 3 compared to 31 and 9, plus Weeha still has several CS on the bank here. So this is going very well for Weeha. Bottom lane is going well for the Wind Ranger. Uh, it seems like Planet Odd may have a repeat of their game number two with this strategy. Which Row Ranger, Wind Ranger winning the laning phase quite hard. And uh, maybe turning into a successful mid game. We'll have to see. Z Freak hasn't really managed to get a whole lot done as this bounty hunter. No early kills. Hasn't managed to win the mid lane or anything like that. 
and his harassment of the Draw Ranger is going to be easily countered by, oh, mid lane. Hero's going to be jumped on. Misery does have the Burrow Strike, holds off onto it for a little bit. Weehaw still has an orb to be thrown out. Firo should be dying here as the Caustic Finale is the one to finish him off. Misery takes a little bit of strike there from Swinemullins. Also, Z-Freak, his bro, comes in, but all of it is for naught. Lina is the first blood. This is so worthy for Planet Odd. Uh, what if I hit level 6? Oh, they... Oh, nice stun. No vision there. Yeah, he just no wants to uh, secure Misery. What a player. Uh, and it benefits the top lane as well. I mean, Draw Range was already pretty much free farming, uh, but uh, Earthshaker uses a TP. Pretty much spends time doing uh, nothing. Couldn't stop that game. Now he gets up for Haste Rune. Misery scouts it. What do you like for builds, by the way, on the uh, the Necropos? Because I, I was a big fan of um, back when Mouser was running it all the time. Modera had this build. Oh, Seafree just got caught out by a sentry. They might have enough slow to be able to bring him down. He gets outside of the range, and uh, the Warlock heal won't be enough. But the Modera's build. Yeah, you were saying, I don't know the Modera build. He goes four staff into, um, into Aghanim Scepter. Oh. Ag Four stuff, good uh, to get the hero out of the focus from sanking stun, um, maybe even puck coil, shackle. It's a good build, I guess. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of Petas. That, that's a really good item for the hero because it gives him so much stats. Oh, we are and Firo having a battle here in the mid lane. The coil not enough to be able to bring Firo down. The two will walk away and shrug off those injuries. Yesterday we saw uh, someone going uh, Necro with a heart instead of uh, Ags. Uh, Ags is such a valuable item on, on Necro. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a must-have. At one point you need to have it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, team fights definitely draw out long enough that uh, that, that Aghanim Scepter comes in big time. Necropose is doing all right, 30 and 10, but compare that to the Wind Ranger, 35 and 10. Again, Moon Meander is just destroying with this Wind Ranger uh, with the extra damage from the Draw Ranger's position. Yeah, and uh, once again, he he's gonna go for that drums. Uh, dr more and more we see people picking up uh, drums. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy about it, uh, because item was kind of forgotten. Even uh, yesterday we saw uh, Jawar, with, he was not going, doing good on that jug. Guy he went for drums instead, which paid off. What was his build? Because he went another, like, kind of yes. small stat item afterwards, right? It was uh, drums and then what? Uh, drums into Atas. Yeah, yeah Atas. Into Axe, uh, into Axe, so... I don't know, it was 2.k HP win range. Yeah, it was crazy how tanky he was, and he was still outputting a good amount of damage again, because he doesn't really need damage items. That's what the Draw Ranger is for. Moon Meander kind of baiting Moo in here, because he do, does have a two-man smoke coming out. Misery and Resolution can jump forward here. Nice shackle shot. They're going to be able to get the quick kill onto Moo, and now Demon, as he runs his way through the trees, is probably going to be caught by Moon Meander. And Planet On will pick up two for that rotation. Nice smoke movement out. Bringing the Draw Ranger to that Tier 2, smoking through the lane. A nice fast rotation from Planet Odd that gets them a big lead now. This is how we play with uh, Draw Ranger. You need to get something done. Uh, they just killed two heroes and they're gonna push push the lane. Seems like uh, Complexity wants to defend it. But, uh, can they do it? That, that's the thing. I mean, the Misery is already behind. Yeah, this is uh, it's a little difficult, especially since they're also trying to go on Soxa. In the top lane, Z-Freak has already slowed him down with a TP coming in for Misery. They actually are going to go for this quick kill, but the Echo Slam's not quite enough. Z-Freak does not have the damage to be able to finish him off either, so Misery barely managed to save his fellow support's life, unless the Fisher... Oh no, still not enough. 14 HP. Z-Freak, is he going to go back there? He is, but the TP score has already been used. Misery definitely dodges to win the Mullen's attempt with the Enchant Totem stun. They're searching for this Warlock, but they will find nothing but air behind that Tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, the bottom lane looks like Demon actually ends up going down. Resolution helps pick up that kill. 404 error. Couldn't find the Warlock. Also, <laughs> Warlock just got one point in Fatal Bonds. He's still, still saving points. Also, uh, he just bought a Tome. Level 10, did, we bought a Smoke. They're ready to fight. Yeah, I like, I like the choice of... Um, them putting the experience onto the Warlock. Like that rotation out, you know, leaves sucks. Uh, we see this all the time with like heroes like Warlock, Winter Wyvern, those kind of heroes that you just leave them in a safe lane to be able to get their level six uh, a bit faster because they have such a big team fight ability. 
um, and use that, move that carry around to try and get some early pressure. Yeah, that's what Planet God was always good at. Uh... Just uh, getting XP to the heroes they need. Uh, when someone rotates, there's a er, almost immediate rotation they for sure the other hero. Laguna Blades. We all dead. Radiant all right. are fortified. But yeah, you were saying Planet Odd very good at those kind of like fast rotations. Yeah, when uh, you saw immediately when uh, Drow went top, uh, Misery still had uh, his DP ready just for the save, and. Uh, Warlock on top just uh, taking the XP, fallen. then Warlock deep is back, uh, so you now have uh, 10 minute level 6 boat supports. That, that's amazing. We can see from the cheering complexity that I feel really good about that rotation mid, because everything was going pretty badly. Um, you know, bottom lane was getting stormed, they couldn't really stop it, they're failing to get some of these kills, and then boom. They get the, the fast kill onto Weeha's puck and turn that into a tier 1 tower push. That ends up going down. That is worth way more than the safe lane Radiant Tower, the complexity. Now they may just be able to set up another kill here. Hero does manage to get the LSA, not able to get any follow-up though. Meanwhile, top lane, Misery and Weeha combo up to manage to kill Mu again. Mu now sitting at a score of 0-2-0, zero, zero, only 45 CS. He's hitting below Swindle Melons when it comes to farm, and that's uh, a place that nobody wants to be. Well, yeah, and his item choice, I don't think uh, it's sometimes uh, good to go for a mech on Necro if you're dominating and you just want to keep the pressure, but uh, as a comeback item, uh, it's not that good. Maybe he'll just keep the buckler and go for something else, I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope so too. It's I, just, I think it's a nice armor. Yeah, just for the armor against the draw aura because everyone deals the right click damage. Radiant's middle tower. Tier 1 tower. That's oh, gonna look be going at Misery, fast. going Misery. so deep. Jesus, he's going to be stunned up, but they do have the Chaotic Offering to follow all of this up. Weeha jumps in, managed to get the silence to finish off the Lina. Echo Slam does control him, though. They are going to be able to get the Reaper's Sight to be able to finish him off, but it is going to be traded away. Swindle Monks get caught by that Shackle Shot. Managed to trade two for one and take that mid tower. Planet Odd getting so much more out of these fights. Uh, Puck sitting on a Veil, level 11. Lina, level 10. What is she going to go for? Seems like... I see more, uh, more, more Yules uh, yeah. early on to remove. I mean, there are two silences from Drow and Puck, so Yule Scepter might be a better choice. Yeah, I do I do like the Yule Scepter. It feels like they're going to need to be active here, and like they just can't let Planet Odd take all these towers, right? That would just be a death sentence. So they need to be a little bit more active. I feel like the Yule Scepter build kind of promotes that. A little bit of movement speed, great stats sets up uh, an LSA combination as well as a safe mechanism. As you said, you've got the silence uh, and a lot of direct damage to throw onto Alina that's out of position. We'll see if uh, see if Firo agrees. They actually go for a four-man smoke up. Only three of them heading here into the jungle area. z has got to be leading things off with his invisibility, but Planet Odd do seem to have some idea of what's going on. You can see they're playing very defensive here in this offlane side. Gonna go for a smoke themselves, where we off is deep behind the tier one tower. Looks Wait. like he's gonna be setting up his team's rotation. Yeah, they know what's up. Uh, they immediately smoke. They don't have a rock, but uh, they can still fight. It's a level three Fatal Bonds. That combined with Buck spells, it's more no than way. enough. I thought Misery for sure was going to sell that wind laser by the uh, the TP. It looks like they actually caught Z-Freak. I missed that one. The smoke popped. And they got the kill there. But it does cost them that, that big team fight that they really wanted. That is, in fact, a, a death by Z-Freak that is well worth it, in my opinion. Because I could see Planet Odd just running over the entirety of complexity in that top lane. Yeah. And uh, once the rock is, rock is up, uh, they might even go and try to force a Roche fight. Earthshaker still doesn't have a Blink Dagger, Planet Out doesn't know that. Uh, with Shadow Blade, they're mo more mobile, sanking with a Blink, they can easily pick off one or two heroes and have uh, pretty much enough time to kill the Roche. And one of these heroes is very much affected by the silence. Necrophos likes to be able to feel comfortable pushing out side lanes and farming away, but in a game like this, he actually has to play pretty careful. As you can see, Planet Odd do make... Uh, Rotation down here, looking for any heroes in the trees. Oh, Jimmy in trouble. That lane ward is scouting him. Misery. Stop it. Does get the burrow strike. It's not going to follow up with an epicenter. Just stops the TP. That may be, uh, yeah, the revealed blink dagger for sure. 
let's see if uh, Planet Odd can keep the pressure. He just showed his blink dagger, he's on top, they have a tier 1 tower if he wants a TP or a shrine, there it is. This wind, wind ranger is going so big. Oh, nice shackle. That is worth it. They can actually just take Swindle Mullins out of the equation. There's no way that Complexity can really fight for this tier 2. The lanes really aren't in position for Complexity to trade away. So. Uh, that, delaying that blink dagger is uh, one of the biggest threats. Oh, nice double stun there from Misery with the follow-up. Dream Coil, beautiful combination that's going to be able to net at least one kill on a T-Freak. A silence on this window is actually preventing him from laying out any damage until finally it wears off. Does manage to get the Fisher, almost sets up the LSA. Another nice double stun from Misery with the cost of denying. Oh, almost missed power shot. Missed power shot may have just cost them the kill as a little bit of kill from Mu. Will keep Swindamel alive. Planet Odd. Probably taking a little bit of surprise there. The buyback from Swindle Mullins does help Complexity contest that tower push. End up getting the deny as well as a couple kills. A little bit of misplay there from Planet Odd. Uh, I guess Saxa didn't count that Shackle will hit on Earthshaker first time, so he dropped a rock. Yeah. But uh, Misery with, uh, what, two or three times double man stun? That, that, this is what... Uh, good uh, sanking players do. Uh, they don't want to commit to using uh, Epicenter. It's always good to go first with a blink, use a double stun. It's so much more valuable than uh, using an epi. Then you still, you just go back and you still have epi for the next fight. They, they can't really uh, go together. Yeah, if he, his second entrance into that fight when he got the second two-man stun, um, one of which was hitting Swindemel. So he'd actually gotten that kill and he was so close to getting it. The power shot just off the mark. That would have been a dieback on, on Swindemons, and you could have then at least said, well, that fight might have gone bad, but for Swindemons specifically, that's still a, a very delayed blink dagger. But because he didn't die and he was part of the fight and managed to be a part of the build and got a lot of space, he is just 500 gold away from this big team. By initiating yeah, item. with that buyback, uh, he actually got something out of it. Pretty much he was sitting on the same gold, so, so he's good. At least he got to some XP from it, that's it. What you doing here, Misery? He wants to maybe set up a kill on Swindamons, but I, there's no way Epicenter for a strike can bring this guy down, so he does need some additional help. Complexity are going to be smoked up a pretty decent spot. I hear the Epicenter going up, but at the same time, they are going to be able to execute the Warlock. Sure enough, the Epicenter not even close to bringing down the Earthshaker, but he does follow up here as Planet Odd managed to come in with Weeha. Now the rest of Complexity hot on their trails. Do have the track movement speed to give them as well. Weeha, we need to find a way out of this one. Misery tries to give up his life in order to make sure that Weeha does get out, gets deep into the trees, TPs away out of reach, even if he is an out of Radiant's sight. Middle tower yeah, they still managed attack. to take down only two of the heroes and them delaying the big dagger on Shaker. It's still Radiant's good for Planet Odd and taking the tier 2 tower on mid. Meanwhile, Windrunner also free farming. Look at the farm on that Windrunner. Rod of Atos, drums, building into a BKB now. He is second uh, in net worth for Planet Odd, third overall. Piero is just trying to Radiance be the one to keep it all together right now. He's attack. finished up the Bloodstone, so we can start seeing those Bloodstone charges mounting up. This is the tempo of this game is looking like Firo is going to have to be that big, high ground defending damage dealer. Yeah, they because need... Planet Otter, very rapidly taking Yeah, it. they rely so much on how Firo will play in the next 10 minutes. Still, they didn't attempt to go Roche. Feel like Planet Odd feels comfortable just taking these fights because uh, what, they only have one tier two to kill on top. And if you see Bounty Hunter and uh, Shadow Shaman, these heroes don't uh, don't scale well. That, that's the thing. You have a Warlock uh, who's always good. You have a Sanking who's amazing during the mid game, and then you have a Bounty Hunter. They managed to get two good kills with Track Gold, but I'm, I'm not sure that's enough. Top tower uh, is under attack. Solar Crest? Not Solar Crest, the small one. On a bounty? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know what to build on that hero. The that hero is. Yeah. Oh, that hero is. We hero is weak overall. <laughs> that's that's one of the low cost hate heroes. Yeah, uh, Bane. What is that? Bounty. Z-Freak gonna be caught here. 
got himself the Roche. Oh, Jimmy, what are you doing? He just runs forward and it's going to be the second victim. No, he doesn't run. He he walks. He shambles on in. Hero. Oh, the Echo Slam. Oh, three. Oh, my God. He actually wipes up three of them. Swindon Mellis turns the fight entirely. That looked like disaster for Complexity. But the captain of Complexity himself holds it together and wins the fight. Holy shit. What a change up. What an Echo. Wow. Oh. Literally just erase them. Ooh, that is getting insane. the chills from this echo. I mean, that was like a one-two pickoff that it just looked like the one by one mentality, where right where they they get Deep Freak, Jimmy's out of position as well, so they get that kill. All of a sudden, we've got a coil on Firo. Th that was going to turn into three wham bam, three kills, and then still Roshan, and then probably tier two push and etc. All those other things. But now with that place, one of them has got a whole lot back in the bank for complexity and Planet Odd's entire strategy has been probably delayed at least two minutes. They were three at the exact same spot. There were literally three <laughs> heroes standing on top of each other. Uh, I guess they didn't expect Earth Shaker to have a Blink Dagger because they Dyer's killed him, uh, what, uh, three attack. times? Yeah. But still, the you can't afford that kind of a misplay. Wow, Jesus. <laughs> That is crazy. Is oh, look at the real. It's in it. 6,000 gold lead not so long ago. Dyer's now it's just 3k. Could have dropped even more as Shadow Shaman Wards take the bottom tower. Bountiful. Little mistakes. He got 1.5k so gold from that. Yeah, he's by using Echo. He almost straightens up, gets a, a Yule Scepter. So Planet are are going to be able to uh, still push into Tier 2, but Complexity are doing a pretty good job countering that play with this push. Complexity at this point, what, what's your game plan? I think, I think it's just like you want to be able to force Planet Odd back as much as possible. You never want to be stuck in that, okay, we have to defend high ground now, right? Yeah, they, they still want to keep the pressure. Uh, they have Veil finished on Necro. Good, uh, g gives him some stats, uh, mana pool, uh, also some armor Radiant's against uh, all these right clickers. And uh, maybe that was a Veil Echo Slam. I don't know. They didn't, they didn't see. Yeah, I'm not, maybe that's I'm not why sure they did so much damage. So you're happy with this change up build, right? Yeah, Buckler definitely. Into uh, Veil. That yeah. is so much armor. Crimson Guard is one of the best items to have against the O lineups. A uh, Wind Ranger as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe Bounty Hunter after he finishes uh, Solar Crest. He also got some gold there. Could possibly pick up that one. Mm. Our Puck. Behold. Working on the Lincoln Sphere. You're gonna need a lot of them to protect against the uh, the Reaper's Scythe. Some of the initiation. Z Freak gonna pop another smoke here. Doesn't look like they had the counter vision on any of their heroes. Got a silence. They do manage to hit him, but uh, oh, stun actually does hit onto move. Odd. Kind of following this up. Soxa is sitting in the back, holding on to Chaotic Offering, waiting for Complexity to funnel in, trying to save Mu. But Complexity do remain pretty calm and collected there. They just maintain this kind of four man semicircle around Mu. They didn't have a gush from the Ranger. It was on cooldown. Okay, they're going in with a puck. Yeah, they got the free kill on Z Freak. Something. And what will they do with this space now? Are they actually going to go high ground with this Aegis? Looking like it. They need to focus uh, Necro. Lina also has a Blink Dagger, so she can position herself well in team fights. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to be possible. It's hard against Power Shot, it's, uh, against Puck Alti, against Fatal Bonds. She needs to stand at first Dyer's at uh, is under super big range away. We've seen Firo with this build twice. It's like his own little um, quirk. Yeah, we saw Lina it uh, when he was playing. Uh, he had, what, uh, Void in his team? Yeah. So he could Void position himself. Or yeah. Somewhat of a similar scenario. He's got the Shaker to, to follow up, but I, I think in some ways he just likes the the idea of being able to reposition himself as Alina, because you know it's a lot of it's also just the right click firepower, right? So 
We ha. Huh? Use his blink here. Oh, boo. He oh, you knows something is up. Yeah, he, not sure if you he heard something, spotted something, but he knows. There are heroes waiting in the wings. Now, Swindamons, he wants to actually bait this out. So, who's going to come forward? Fortunately, thanks to the ward placed by Misery, they will see Swindamons uh, attempting to bait out Moo. So Weeha is not going to make that committal. Blink Dagger now on the Necrophos as well. Oh, this this is a good setup. They have three Blinks. They're really mobile. Uh, with uh, just a Fisher, Blink Laguna Blade, and Blink Reaper Sight. Pretty much everyone, every hero dies. Freak continues his constant uh, scouting out of the enemy. Coin for me. Odd. I think. Oh, did they actually see that one? They got the silence onto him. That is going to be a dead bounty hunter and probably a ward that gets countered as well. With the BKB finished up with the Wind Ranger, we now have this pretty good high ground seizure where you can just focus fire and pop BKB when necessary since he's hitting that tier 3. Well, this is the purpose of picking a bounty hunter. You just scout to provide the vision for your team, suicide. Uh, that's pretty much what he will be doing for the next uh, the end of the game. <laughs> Misery has an invis rune, but I don't think they're comfortable jumping on a necrophose with who knows how many heroes behind him. Right now they really don't see a whole lot on the map. Jimmy is trying to do his split pushing with the Shadow Shaman. I think we had a conversation about this, right, where you need to, to be able to put pressure on towers with the Shadow Shaman support. You can't just sit back in the base constantly. Uh, yeah, but it's really hard to get out of the base. They took tier 2 tower on bottom, uh, especially against Shadow Blade on Draw Ranger, Sanking, uh, even Wind Ranger TPing. I mean, the hero just dies, but uh, he needs to do a Jimmy thing, try to go through the forest, get a Quelling Blade, classic Jimmy stuff. Remember, that was his one of his favorite things with uh, Keeper of the Light. I'll yeah, burrowing his way through trees. Beastmaster, just uh, yeah. you know, classic Jimmy, I guess. Weeha. Missed out on the uh, Z Freak pushing out here. He actually gives himself a, a Tinker Warp with an, uh, an Invis rune here. Kind of interesting. Well, the, the <coughs> it's a, as you mentioned, Tinker Ward, but uh, uh, a lot of uh, teams started to use it. Uh, just in general, just to protect uh, your safe lane. So a lot of players love to be there, not only Jimmy. Illusion. Z Freak trying to set up this kill on Weehaw. Windows can go in with the instant sun. But control the puck for about five to six seconds. But by the way, if Planet uh, Dog doesn't qualify, uh, are they going to be an EU team again? Uh, I believe they wanted to be an EU team, yeah. But because... What do you Americans feel about it? If they qualify, you're going to praise them as an, an American team, right? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Makes sense. It's, uh, that's what America is all about. Anybody who wants to be American can be American. As long as you can get through the visa process yeah, and the travel and all bans. That stuff. And, <laughs> yeah, all those are things, but... Border control, etc. And while you're here, watch out for that racial profiling. But besides all of that, so yeah, they, if they want to be American, that we're we're absolutely going to take them under our wing, under the flag, and tout them as our own. Are you going to add one more? Uh, was it Panama? Or I don't know which. Someone, you talking someone, about Mount Rushmore? Uh, no, no, no. Someone wanted to join. I don't know if that even possible. I've read it somewhere. Uh, that you might add oh, another star. Oh, uh, yeah, flag. yeah. They voted to. Um, they voted for statehood. Uh, it wasn't Panama. It was someone else. Never mind. But it takes a while. I don't. I don't think that's. It. All right. This is gonna be interesting. Planet. Uh, Planet, Planet dog. dog just uh, qualified for the international. Congratulations wow. to them. Imagine if Planet Dog qualifies and they already did and planet odd doesn't superior planet Demon. Almost 
getting caught here by Weeha. Does the coil. No TP ready, but still there's a sinking there. You are dead, demon. All you can do is buy more seconds. That's what he does. Uh, but complexity are smoked up, and they make it a very rapid rotation. Straight to resolution, but... Sentry. Oh no, the dust goes out too late. Now the shackle shot straight into Firo as well as Swindle on the back line. He still has his blink. It doesn't actually get hit by the chaotic offering, so maybe he can actually jump in. Firo being pecked at by Moon Meander does manage to get the Bloodstone Suicide. Meanwhile, Puck actually dies to the Reaper site over the cliff there. Planet Odd trade. Uh, they It's a Bloodstone Suicide on Lina, and they got a Reaper Scythe death on the Puck. That feels like that was actually still okay for complexity. Still good, but um, those Bloodstone charges are going down. Also, Wind Ranger is just getting bigger. Uh, that uh, Road of Atas build is ju just amazing. If you use Atas, it gives you two extra second uh, moves for a Shackle Shot angle. Sweat amounts, and the Fuel Scepter combination here, but immediately sounds up by resolution. Jimmy's here, but only gets the Hex onto Moon Meander to follow up. From Firo is enough to be able to bring down that carry. Can he give resolution though? His BKB's wearing out soon. Swin Amons does have a Fisher coming in. Doesn't quite manage to block him, but it may not matter as they got the damage out. Nukes double kill for Firo. And Planet Odd begin to crumple. That fight up here at the shrine area was pretty lucky for them, but Complexity get another great fight in oh, the mid river. And, and the Roche is Roshan. up. This is so big for Complexity. They got the what four track kills. One previous one. Aegis. Jeez. So good. Aegis to leave probably. Cheese to necro. Cheese yeah. is so good. Uh, having extra life on the carry. He doesn't even have that uh, amount of HP to kill himself. So he doesn't even need to use a yeah. ghost shroud. It restores 2.5k HP anyway. Yeah. Still trying to get a, a Lotus Orb. Two silences uh, can remove a shackle, can remove pretty much anything. Returns Burrow to Strike. Can it remove shackle actually? I don't think so. Oh no, 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 no. That's no. Strong spot. spell, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. But, right on the, on the silences and. Just some extra armor. What is he sitting at? 30 armor. 64% physical resistance. And he almost has the Aghanim Scepter complete. Uh, it's switched up. Decides not to go for the Lotus Orb. Hmm. So, just a value plate now for now. Four staffs is the next choice for our Bounty Hunter. Now that he's got the mana, we've showcased uh, Hero almost getting the Shiva's Weeha does not have his dust ready to go. So, I'm sure he's more. He just scared used for his the scan. Life. To scout the bounty hunter. He's away. Rotations up. Complexity gonna go for that tier two with the Aegis. Planet odds. Don't really have the lane super far pushed out. There's no tier two to threaten down here. So Planet Odd want to be able to force Complexity back. They've got to go for a, a fast high ground push here. Keep Complexity away from their own high ground. Okay, so Earthshaker is actually getting Crimson Guard, what I was talking about. We're getting it on Bounty Hunter, but it uh, seems like Bounty Hunter doesn't have enough gold to get it. Really I guess there's really not much that you need on an Earthshaker past this, right? The Blink Duels. Yeah, maybe a Shadow Blade at some point, just for the better positioning. But uh, it's a good item. Earthshaker is so tanky. With uh, Power Strength, Power Thread Strength, 10 plus his level 10, 10. Strength, that's 20 strength, that's a lot of HP. And he has a lot of armor. Now, Planet Odd, they saw the Necrophobus TP back, showed himself. They they backed up real quick. Alright, mission accomplished, I thought they were going to go farm, but they're actually sticking around and trying to set up some sort of trap to see if any of those heroes push out the bottom lane, and they can actually uh, maintain on a, an offensive front here, but... Nobody from Complexity is sticking their neck out. A little bit too wise to the situation. Yeah, this is uh, where Jimmy should stand. Look at him. He's trying to beat up. Uh, I think it's pointless to be in the base. Even if he dies, uh, still gets more. Even if he uses Eater Shock twice, three times on a creep wave. Yeah. I like that uh, Complexity is... 
doing this. That it seems very clear to me that they know how to be able to force Planet Odd um, back into a situation that they don't want to. They even put Firo here in this bottom line with the Aegis, so that is just simply not a hero that Planet Odd can comfortably go on. They're still farming out pretty well, though. They've got an Aghanim Scepter coming in for the Wind Ranger. Dro Ranger is actually working on a Diffuser Blade. Always need one against a Necropos and our Puck. Still not completing up that Lincolns, but yeah, Puck closing in fast. Puck didn't get any good items for what? Past 15 minutes? Yeah. It's been a while. SK picked up a gem just to kill the Bounty Hunter, just to de -board. Uh Pipe is finished, then gate all the damage from Earthshaker and the uh, Necro, Lina. Pretty much everything is magical besides Lina. First times in the whole game, Complexity are holding on to a lead. A small one, but it is a lead nonetheless, and a pretty big experience lead through those fights. Sea Freak scouting out behind the tier 2 tower while Firo calmly chips away. Dyer's middle we'll tower it. has fallen. Time to go high ground complexity as they're going to try and chip away to tier 3. They do have to be very careful with their high ground push because there is so much catch from the planet on side. That's why they're sitting so far back and just letting the long range Spiro sit forward. He does have that Aegis. Moonmander is trying to take that Aegis away for free, hoping not to commit too much to that first line. He will manage to get it committed to the BKB. That is acceptable. Still, though, their tier 3 almost dropped from all that damage from Firo. Again, it's insane. The physical damage output of this Lina. Yeah, needs a little bit of nerf there. And she's not even 25 yet. That's the problem. Now, they gave cheese to Lina, so she's going to continue doing that. See if Firo can finish it up. They need uh, those Lincoln Spheres on Planet Odd. Uh, I'm surprised Saxa didn't go for Hydra Cape. Yeah, against Reaper uh, Sight. Against Reaper Sight, it's so good. That item, like, single-handedly killed Necrophos it. when it first came out. Well, I can understand why he's going. Maybe just to give some extra... Everyone has a lot of armor right now on the complexity side. So, just to remove all that armor, especially when the Wind Ranger is focusing it. Once Wind Ranger gets just the Crystallis, she's going to be, like, two times stronger than she is right now. Yeah. Oh, Planet Odd. This 5-man smoke is going to be a little difficult. They are going into high ground here. It's going to pop. Soxa is the first one to get popped here as Weeha on the right-hand side. The old Scepter on himself. Trying to stay safe. Does cling forward. Managed to get the coil. Goes on to Demon first. Does have the Glimmer Cape, though. They managed to get the Silence on the move, but Swindamons is going to counter. They managed to get the jump on to Weeha, but the Chaotic Offering stops all that combination. Misery having trouble with his Epicenter. Convexity, they're actually going to lose Firo here very quickly. He's already in through the cheese, and Resolution just needs a couple more pot shots to be able to finish him off. They see it for a second. Get the Rod of Age goes out. Yule Scepter down. Fisher is up, but a Silence goes down first. Firo managed to blink himself away, though. Surviving for now. So in the melons, he's going to pop out. No, but no, oh, the Shekel shot. The Echo Slam doesn't actually latch in. The Echo Slam is going to be able to hold in this. Twin Ranger and the Shuriken helps finish him off. Complexity now to run on through. I've already completed two of three heroes, make it a fourth now. Planet Odd just looking for resolution. They don't even need to look. They know exactly where he's at. They've got the track on top of him. They're going to be able to slow him down. Weeha's going to try and save resolution's life, but it's just not going to happen. The Reaper Scythe will cut him down to size. 100 seconds on the clock with buyback available for Planet Odd, but Complexity, a full five man still are able to go for a high ground push if they want. But it looks like they're not feeling too comfortable doing it right away. They're going to back up, go for the Shrine, take advantage of the 80 seconds still that the Grand Ranger has for a Death Timer. They didn't, they didn't even uh, use big Echo Slam plus one man Echo Slam. The problem for Planet Odd is there was no uh, successful Shackle Shots, and they try to focus Lina. Uh, it's so hard to take her down Radiant with Crimson Boston Guard. Tower. This is, this is the item of this game. Uh, also, Lina had a cheese, then uh, used uh, Fuel Scepter, blinked out. So, a lot of time committed Radiant to kill Boston Lina, and if, even if they committed, Dyer's she could actually suicide once again. Yeah. Dyer's oh, jump forward with the Shiva. It's going to be able to get the jump kill onto a Sankey with no buyback. They actually destroy the Warlock as well, but he does have buyback. Shackle shot, latches on to Boo, as well as when him on the back line, but Boo is super tanky, and they surely don't want to go on him first. They're going to have to deal with these damn wards. The wards managed to finish up the tier 3 tower. Unhealable damage. Focus the range racks. Focus the range racks. Well, you got to forgive him. They at least came close to taking the melee racks. 
my biggest pet peeve is when you know for sure you're not going to get that melee rex and you still try and hit it. Well, that's uh, that's the thing. You always feel like you need to take it, but uh, once you once you get that feeling that you're not taking it, it feels so bad. Look at that lead. I can't help but thinking this all comes back to Swindlemelon. Swindlemelon, three-man echo, echo. Yeah. Like, uh, Planet Odd were looking in such good control of the game. They were taking Roshan. They would have had an Aegis with five heroes. I remember, like, the, the side lanes weren't very well pushed in at the time either. So Planet Odd would have felt pretty free to just go wherever they wanted to and just kind of constrict the map. But that, that one play gave Complexity a large array of hope. Got several strong team fights since then. Now up to over a 15k gold lead. And uh, look at this macro with the uh, assault finished. This is so ballsy. When is the last time you saw Necro with assault? Curious. Pretty much never. Yeah, I I figured you know plate mail into Lotus Orb. You Probably got Shivas. Shivas. Hero, yeah, but Lina but... already has Shivas, so no point in going for Shivas. Lou's like, ah, you know, he's looking at Firo. This machine gun. He's like, that looks kind of fun. I kind of want to do that too. You know, I want to be a, a right clicker. Move. Stun. Scepter does still have the pay shift as well as the orb. Is he gonna blink to it? I don't think so. Yeah, he's gonna blink downwards. Complexity are going to miss that kill. I'll take your Got trip. baited up by the orb pretty hard there. A gem for Z Freak. Didn't actually spot this one out earlier. Looks like Misery bought it. They took it away from him in that last team. Fight. Yeah, they need the. Uh that purge to remove the ghost shroud. Draw Ranger is trying to get one because they can't focus the hero. Even if, if they do, they need so much time to actually kill him. Yeah. Still has one more slot available. Then he can build towards refresher if needed. Well, this is why I was talking about Aghanim Scepter being the best item on Necrolite. Can use it twice, sometimes even three times during the team fight. Mm -hmm. I think it takes a lot of pressure off of using Reaper Scythe. Because it's so important to get that kill for the regeneration. Radiance top tower is now sometimes in team fights you can almost lead off with Reaper Scythe and have your team follow up the damage. Soxa is gonna be caught out here by Zebri. The rest of his team is uh, pretty deep here trying to push out lanes. What is this hero? L look at Lena, she's sitting on 455 move speed without boots of speed. Yeah. Nerves Drops incoming. Off the phase boots because you know, yeah, you need an extra slot it. for Eye of Scotty. <laughs> uh, it's pretty absurd. Dimmy, Demon, Demon, Demon. Radiance oh. top Whoa, jump in Echo Slam. They've actually managed to catch Weeha here. The silence is there from Resolution. Took the tier 3 tower and now hope to make the escape. Necrophos is here. They're all hiding in the trees. BKB TP out. Weeha. His TP was cancelled, but Complexity don't actually know that. So, uh, it'll just take them uh, a while to get back. But Planet Odd do manage to take a tier 3 with all that split push. Well played. Won't be able to stop this Roshan, though, I'm sure. They have a rock, but the Roshan is pretty much dead. So what does Lina drop? Yule Scepter. Yeah. There goes some that movement speed. That. Another cheese for the Necrophos. Look at her. Poor girl's only down to 400 movement speed without Yule's boots. We hop. Turns around, gets the Yule Scepter onto Firo. Firo with no Blink Dagger for quite some time. I have to say, this Blink Dagger is pulling up big. Yeah, now, one time where Yule's blinked himself away. It's huge. He's this managed to set up a couple kills. Yep, yeah, item is paying off, but uh, he will need to replace it soon. Probably go for a Bloodthorn or just Daedalus, whatever he wants. Yeah. Maybe MKB. Well, MKB is actually a better choice against the uh, Wind Ranger and the Solar Crest. That wasn't Kite the Burrow Strike, nor was that the uh, the Fisher. Looks like Misery will still get out for sight. We'll take him down. 85 seconds, still has buyback. A little bit deja vu. I've seen this ward before. 
Planet Odd are hoping to be able to catch somebody who's, who goes and stops this creep wave, but uh, Planet, or Complexity rather, they're just going to keep pushing forward, cutting the creep wave out entirely. The rest of them are going to rotate to the side here. Moon Meander's going to stumble right into them. He does have a BKB, goes for the instant out. Reaver Scythe is there to be able to stop it though, so Moon Meander may still be caught. going to be hexed up. We do have the call to control the shackles. Easy. Bring down both Misery and Moon Meander again. That Aghanim Scepter. Aghanim cool Scepter. Down and and the, it's ready in five seconds once again. Pretty much you can <laughs> use it all the time. Well, level 25 talent. The for Necro. Minus one second death ball. That, that is so shitty. Yeah, I, I much prefer the HP. They're going to kill you. It's going to be because of stun lock and burst damage most of the time. So. Oh, we'll see what uh, Moo opts to pick here because he is incredibly tanky. He may not feel he needs it. He's going still back to the Lotus Orb. Even more armor going to be picked up here. Yeah, he does get the horns of that. So, like, 2,700 HP. Arlena is actually ahead of him at 2,800 with a second life. Thanks to that Aegis. Planet Odd do not Dyer's have one of the big damage dealers for attack. this fight. Moon still needs another 15 seconds. So it looks like they may just give up the mid lane and fight for bottom. Moon Manor's just not up fast enough. They're going to lose like their tier 3 and maybe even a Rax before this. Yeah, the Ender, they're going to make their initiation. Immediately brawl the freak of all the heroes. The Bounty Hunter's down, sure, but what's that really mean? Vero's jump board has actually gone straight. Managed to kill the Warlock. Nice! Echo Slam from Twin Devils. Left hand side. Managed control 2 again. Now the buyback starts is gonna start funneling in. Misery is back again, but can't manage to save Weeha, who does have a buyback stick. But all the damage dealers of complexity are doing fine. Who gives a damn? If the bounty hunter is dead, he doesn't mean shit when it comes to an actual team fight. It's this four man of complexity all looking strong, and Planet Odd gave it up. Game number one is over. Planet Odd are crumpling. Complexity may just have their way back into the TI ball. They committed to epicenter there. I mean, the game was pretty much over. Uh, but still, you don't want to go for that play. Just killed Bounty Hunter. That, that's the weakest hero in the whole lineup. And uh, now you don't have any burst damage. I don't know. Complexity managed to come back into the game with that big Echo Slam from Swindles. Three-man Echo.